want to encourage all of you to be curious about what makes us different. Think about a baby who's discovering his toe for the first time, or a young child who sees a bug crawling across the floor. She's not scared of it. She isn't grossed out by it. She just really wants to watch it wiggle around. We were born curious. And the problem that has happened as we grow into adulthood is that we start seeing these differences as things to be separating ourselves, the us and the them. Growing up in Arlee, I thought I was Salish throughout my childhood. You know, like a Salish-Irish combination. I knew the language. I have a Salish name. I spent a summer up at Agnes Vandenberg's culture camp making buckskin dolls with my Yaya Francis. When I found out I wasn't Salish, it was devastating for me. I really, it, I, I never felt different, but all of a sudden, I was different. And I learned that those differences weren't necessarily something that was seen as a positive thing. My differences were, used, were able to be used against me to separate me, to make me weird, to make me something that didn't fit in. How many of you in this room have ever felt like you didn't fit in for whatever reason? Your hair color, your skin color, the clothes that you're wearing, the job that you have? Now think about if you've ever made someone feel like they didn't fit in, made fun of them because you didn't, you didn't get them, they were weird. Right? I've done that too. But rather than thinking about our differences as something to separate us, I encourage you to think of them as something to use to explore, to be curious about someone else, to learn something new about someone else. Oftentimes, we see differences as something to separate us rather than being excited about them. I recently went through a training where we had a conversation about this whole idea of being different and how people's differences actually create in them such a, a concern about being different that they'll actually hold back who they truly are, their true selves. So I want you all to picture this activity. Imagine yourself in a room full of strangers. Maybe not this room, some of you probably know everyone in this room. But picture yourself in a room full of strangers and imagine that I asked you to write down the 10 most important things in your life the most important people, the most important events, your, the birth of your children, your upcoming high school graduation, your job, your family. Think about all those things that make you who you are. And then you walk up to a stranger in this room and you have to introduce yourself to that person and get to know them and, and have them get to know you, but you can't talk about anything on that list. Can you imagine how difficult that would be to really show that person who you are? When I did this activity, I was speaking to a woman who was eight months pregnant, and we couldn't talk about it, because it was on her list. It was an actual elephant in the room. Not that she was as big of an elephant, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> but there are people who live their lives like this every day. They hold parts of themselves back because they're so scared that they're not going to be seen as somebody who fits in, that their differences are going to isolate themselves. They're scared to admit that they really love Star Trek, or they have a passion for plant identification that they really love classical music, or they love someone of a different gender. So they hide parts of who they are so that they don't feel isolated. Has anyone ever felt like that in this room? Like you couldn't be your authentic self? I definitely have. See, I'm a nerd. I'm a huge nerd. And if I could just go to school full time, I would. I'd just be a professional student. And there are people who think I'm crazy because that's what I love doing. And that's okay, I don't mind, they can think that. But when I was younger, I really did mind. And I used to get made fun of because I would get you know, A's on all my papers. And people would make fun of me for that because that made me different. It set me apart. And so in fifth grade, I started just getting the answers wrong on purpose so that I wouldn't, fit, I wouldn't be sticking out. I would fit in a little bit more. My fifth grade teacher, Mrs. McHugh, put a stop to that pretty quickly. And she told me, Carissa, if people don't like you for who you are, then they're not worth your time. And I thought she was crazy. Like, why would I want to live in a world where no one liked me? That doesn't make any sense. As an adult, I've realized how right she is, that the parts that make me unique are, are what make me me. Another area that has been a lifetime struggle for me is the beautiful whiteness of my legs. Even to this day, as an adult, I will have people come up to me and be like, girl, you need to get some sun on those legs. And I'm like, no, I don't. If I got sun on those legs, not only would I land planes with the reflection, but I, they would be like that color. This is the color that my legs will always be. I call it 50 shades of white. Um, they can be porcelain, just white, off-white. There's a lot of different shades for that. But when I was a kid, it was something that was used to set me apart, and it still is as an adult. I spent one entire Montana, hot Montana summer walking around in jeans because I didn't want people to see my white legs. I didn't want people to know that I was different and use that against me. My parents followed me around thinking I was going to die of heat exhaustion that whole summer, I'm sure of it. But again, that's something I was able to recognize, that that's something that might make me different, but that's what makes me me. And so I want you to think about 
what it is that makes you different and embrace those differences. Be proud of them and, and show other people what makes you different rather than shying away from them. Because in the end, that's really what's gonna make our world better. I mean, I'm pretty great, I think you're all pretty great too, but a world of just me or a world of just you would just be so boring. And so the, the, the point being is it's really important not only for us to embrace what is, what is different about ourselves, but also get curious about what's different about other people. If you meet somebody and you think, God, what a weirdo, I don't understand anything about this person, instead of marginalizing that person, really ask them questions and get to know what makes them different. You may never be a big Star Trek fan, you may never be a Trekkie. You may never think that talking about football plays is exciting. But when you get the opportunity to speak with somebody who has such a passion for something that you don't know about, not only, it, don't, it not only gives you the opportunity to learn more about that person, but it also gives you an opportunity to learn more about yourself. And that kind of curiosity can really make our world a much better place. So get out there and be curious, learn about each other, and enjoy.